What's up everybody, this is Jan for Chess24. I'm still a little punch drunk from the 72 hour marathon banter blitz session, which I survived over this weekend. So I'm gonna go on holidays tomorrow, off to the United States of America. But before I leave, it's time to have one last glance at the big tournament going on, the European Team Championship. And from that tournament in this video, we're gonna cover the game. Vasily Ivanchuk against Peter Svidler, which happened in the big match. Ukraine against Russia, the two tournament favorites in the lead met. And this is the game from the top board. Our friend Peter Svidler on board one for Russia and Vasily Ivanchuk, the Ukrainian legend on board one for the Ukraine. Ivanchuk with the white pieces goes for the move E4. Ivanchuk plays pretty much everything. So it's sort of common knowledge amongst top players. And if you play Ivanchuk, there's no real point in preparing. You just hope for the best, get a good, good night's sleep. And that's what Svidler did. Goes for his main opening, the classical Rui Lopez. So far, so good. They go down the main line. Of course, Svidler did a bunch of video series on this topic for Chess24. And in this, vid in this video, but also in this game, he's going to go for one of the sharp lines, the Marshall which interestingly Ivanchuk allowed. Ivanchuk in the past has normally avoided this by either playing a4 or h3. One of the sidelines here set a painful loss against Wesley, so you can check out that video as well after bishop b7, d3, d5, where he ran into some preparation. Today he's going for the main move c3, and he was possibly counting on the fact that Svidler was bluffing and wouldn't go for the marshal. More often than not, Svidler prepares, prefers d6 here aiming for a quieter game. But th not this time around, Svidler goes for the marshal, d5, e d5, knight d5, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook takes e5, and c6. This is my bread and butter opening, so I know my way around here. The trendy move is the one that Ivanchuk plays on this game, the move d3. d4 has been the main line for decades, but nowadays d3 is more popular. Bishop d6, rook e1, bishop f5. I'm sure I've explained this in other videos, but the big difference between d3 and d4 is that if black were to play queen h4 here, the typical marshal move, then after g3, queen h3, white has a very unpleasant rook e4, intending to go rook to h4. And the difference is with the pawn on d4, I'm not gonna show it, so you have to use your imagination. With the pawn on d4, black has a move g5 here, stopping rook h4, with the pawn after bishop takes g5 to go queen f5. And if the pawn was here, then this rook and this bishop would be under attack. No good for white, but not with the pawn on d3. Here the rook is protected, therefore this line wouldn't make sense. The bishop would just go somewhere. And that really is the big reason why everyone goes d3 at top level now to lure black into the variation. But of course, d3 has its own big, big body of theory. Bishop f5 has established itself as the main move. Queen f3, still well known. And here, once again, the main line is a move queen to h4, where white has been managing to put a little bit of pressure recently. But Svidler goes for the move that is also my favorite move and the move I've recommended in my video series on chess24, updates on the marshal, rook to e8. This is a very sharp line where both players have to know their way around. And possibly Svidler was speculating that Ivanchuk wouldn't know his way around here. All that well. Ivanchuk is known to play everything and know everything, but he's not known to spacebar, as we call it, very, very deeply in forced lines. And maybe that's what Svidler pinned his hopes on. Svidler had played this line once before in the World Cup final against Sergei Kayakin, but that wasn't a blitz game, and possibly Ivanchuk didn't really expect him to go here again. Anyway, the theory is only just beginning. Rook takes e8, queen takes e8, knight to d2. You have to prevent checkmate with queen e1 and knight d2 is the best way to do so. Queen e1 check anyway, knight f1, bishop g6. All of this is well known to a small circle of people, as Anish Giri put it, I believe, in his article on the World Cup where he covered this line, bishop g6. I've played this position twice with black myself. Basically, black wants to activate himself very quickly, exploit the fact that the rook on a1 is pinned, and he's willing to sacrifice another pawn to do so if needed on d5. Here the main move is the move played in the game, the move g3, giving the white king in square to escape and parrying the threat of bishop takes h2 check. 
it was quite clear we would not see a repetition of the move Kayakin played against Fiddler. Kayakin chose bishop c2 here, which loses after knight takes c3, a move Fiddler missed in that blitz game. But here after knight takes c3, b takes c, queen takes c3, this double attack turns out to be decisive already. There's a lot more theory in this position. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details. h3 is also a move. You can check out my Marshall series if you wanna learn more about it. g3 main line, b4 also the main line, forcing or trying to get white to make a concession here on the queen side, either to go c4 blocking in his own bishop or to give up the bishop with bishop takes d5. Critical move is c4, knight f6, and the theory is only just beginning. Queen takes c6, rook to d8, when, yeah, I believe black is okay, but white yeah, can do research here as well and try to find an opening advantage. This is the battleground where the theoreticians should be exploring, exploring things. I don't know what to say, but this is the critical line. Another line is bishop takes d5, but practice has shown, my practice I believe, I've had this position that black is supposed to be fine here. <clears throat> but Ivan Chuk, possibly to avoid all this highly theoretical stuff, plays a, an odd move here, h4 I've checked, there has been one game with this before. But in general h4 it doesn't make so much sense because it doesn't help white, he already had a luft so he doesn't need another one. He's threatening to go h5, trapping the black bishop, but black just goes h5 himself, stops that, and the inclusion of h4, h5 favors black, because now black has a luft for his king as well. And not only that, the g4 square in the future could turn out to be a nice outpost for the white knight. Now h4 is not a decisive mistake or anything, but I believe in general this inclusion should favor <coughs> The player on the black side, just greeting my colleague here. <laughs> and after h4, h5, the pressure is on white. Bishop takes d5 is once again possible. C takes d5, queen takes d5, and rook to d8. Svidler even thought about rook to e8 here, which is also very interesting. Sacrificing a piece temporarily, and after queen takes d6, go queen d1, tending rook to e1, or bishop takes d3. And black also seems to be fine. One funny little line would be king g2, bishop e4 check, exploiting the position of the queen on d6. So bishop takes d5 does not solve all of white's problems, or well, it leads to equality, but it's probably not what Ivanchuk had in mind. Therefore now he played c4 with the inclusion of these two moves. The knight goes to f6, the most aggressive destination, offering up this pawn on c6, but taking this pawn is always very dangerous even without h4, h5 included, but here even more so. After rook d8, knight g4 is looming, bishop takes d3 is looming, and white will already have to struggle mightily to keep things under control. Ivanchuk plays a logical move, the move bishop to d1. The idea is to just finally free his pieces, get, get him bishop d2, chase the queen away from e1, but the black initiative will be, still be pretty serious. Interestingly enough, I've had this position in one of my games without h4, h5 included, was this position against Daniel Stellwagen, which I think is a better version for white, but I was still quite comfortable with black and mesh to win that game. Therefore, I believe, yeah, that Ivanchuk's plan is just not very dangerous for black and possibly even dangerous for white. The computer gives d4 as the best move here, not an easy move to spot, just quietly trying to get, it, get in c5 and gain some more space, which could lead to more chaos after, let's say, knight g4, c5, bishop somewhere. And a line Peter Svidler mentioned was the spectacular bishop to d2 in this position, queen takes a1, and queen takes c6 with a double attack against a8 and g6, and white is still very much kicking. However, this didn't happen, bishop d1 was played, as I mentioned, with the intention of Kicking the queen out, rook e8, the most active move, bishop d2, queen e5. Still the position of my game against Stellwagen without h4, h5. Here Vanchuk goes rook to c1, when black has a pleasant choice. He could grab this pawn 
But Swidler correctly decided that there's no rush to take on b2. We know the pawn on b2 in general is a bit infamous for being bait for the black queen. Not such a situation here, the queen would not really have struggled, would not really struggle to get out or anything. But Swidler decides to keep up the pressure, puts his bishop on a very nice square on c5, keeping an eye on the f2 pawn, toying with ideas like knight to g4. And it's very hard for white to free himself. He would love to do something like bishop to e3, but it just runs into bishop takes, queen takes, or knight takes. Say knight takes. And queen takes b2 now. When black gets his pawn back with a fantastic position, d3 is also weak. It's just not a lot of fun for white. Therefore Ivanchuk, of course, realizing something has gone a little wrong, goes a3 here, tries to simplify to get rid of some pawns at least on the, king, on the queen side which gives Swidler a pleasant choice. He could take on a3, pawn takes, pawn takes, and let's say knight g4. But he decided against it because he didn't want to vacate this c3 square for the bishop. And here after knight e3, looks like white is still in the game, even though even this is pleasant for black. Another option would be to go queen takes b2 now, also very possible, but then white goes a takes b4, so not that tempting. Knight g4, the third tempting move, but once again after a takes b4, bishop f2, king g2. It's not obvious how black is winning and the position would get very messy. Therefore, no need to go here and Swidler, after some deliberation, goes for a move which I like a lot. He just keeps the tension with a5, tries to keep the white pieces boxed in. And after a takes b4, a takes b4, white has all the worries he had before, even though the a pawns have disappeared. Queen takes c6 in this position and also before without the a pawns just helps black to activate even further after bishop takes d3. The black initiative becomes very very serious and did not appeal to Ivanchuk. Therefore Ivanchuk decided to play a clumsy looking move to keep an eye on the f2 pawn, the move rook c2, also keeping an eye on the b2 pawn but it does look clumsy and it is. Swidler the next move is easy, goes for knight g4, attacking f2. Ivanchuk goes knight e3, trying to buy his way out of the mess he finds himself in. Now Swidler could already simplify with, let's say, bishop takes e3, bishop takes e3, knight takes e3, probably reaching a better endgame, but he rightly decided that there was more in the position. Yeah, maybe rook e2 bothered him, pinning this knight and he decides to go for the kill. His first idea was to play the move queen to d4, just putting more pressure on this whole construction, and after queen takes c6 to go for rook takes e3, but that doesn't work, because after bishop e3, knight e3, it looks like black is winning, f e3, queen takes e3 check, but white has nasty little intermediate check, queen e8 check, king h7, and queen takes e3, and all of a sudden things would have gone badly wrong for black who would just be an exchange down. Therefore Swidler looked for a different solution and he found a very spectacular move to my mind. I was watching this game live with the computer engine running and I thought okay Swidler has many good options but he's not gonna go for the computer move. He proved me wrong. He played the computer move, the move queen to d6, defending the c6 pawn, preparing knight e5, also threatening queen takes d3 in many lines and the black position becomes overwhelming. There's just no way to keep everything under control for white. Can't parry all the threats. Try to think of a good move. There's really nothing but the move that Ivanchuk played in the game. The move knight takes g4. Getting rid of this knight. h takes g4. Queen takes g4. And here we see one very nice tactical point of Swidler's play. Not the only move, but he finds a very cute tactic which ends the game. Plays the move bishop to h5, overloading the white construction. And the point is that after queen takes h5, which was played in the game, black wins by queen takes g3 check. Can't take back because of the rules of chess. King f1 is checkmate in one after queen h, queen f2. Therefore king h1 is, would have to be played. But then queen takes f2, threatens queen g1, checkmate, and there is no defense for white. For example, queen g4 runs into queen f1, king h2, bishop d6. This king is out of squares. White would have to lose at least a queen 
to defend against Mate, which is not worth playing on. Therefore, Ivanchuk resigned at the score scoreboard no, the notation said that he played queen h5 and then resigned probably realizing that after queen g3 his task is hopeless and that's a big big point for peter swidler on the top board of the russia ukraine match he wins with black against the legend vasily ivanchuk russia went on to win that match as well peter swidler no doubt is going to be happy that the marshal brought him a full point if you want to learn more details about this line as i mentioned check out my video series on it it is a very, very complicated line where both sides have to be incredibly precise. And this game, Vasily Ivanchuk was not up to the task and therefore allowed Peter Swidler to score a big point for Russia. Thank you for watching this video. And I'm off on holidays, but I'll try to keep you posted as soon as I'm back. Or maybe even from on the road, from Los Angeles. Become a premium member of Chess24 if you want to have access to my Marshall series and tons of other great video series. I'll see you guys shortly. Bye-bye.